Good morning. G'day. I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me. You know what? I love nothing more than a good old brew as I move around the veggie garden in the morning. And in this video, I want to show you guys how I move around and maintain our young tomato plants so that they can grow big, healthy, and productive. Let's get into it. Before we do go on, let me just put this brew down for a second and I'll talk about the situation we've got going here. Got a whole row of tomatoes along this raised bed trellis. Used to be a gourd tunnel, well it still is. Half gourds, passion fruit now. And the other half, I want it to become a tomato trellis that the tomatoes grow up here, they come over the top. And if you can imagine, I'm training these tomato plants really on the outside so that it climbs up. Let's hope it works. The other thing that's risky is I'm growing them through winter and I've got beads of sweat coming off my forehead. We have mild winters, but it can still be very risky. And in the veggie garden, I like taking risks because with risks come reward. And if I can grow these tomatoes through this subtropical winter, even though we might get a below freezing day and it could knock them off, hopefully it won't, hopefully just retard growth a bit and they'll keep pumping through. We've grown great tomatoes here before through the winter time. And the reason why I like growing them through winter is because there's less pests, there's less humidity, and the tomato plants generally do better. Having said that, there are things that we need to do to manage the tomato crop so that they do have the best chance of getting to that productive stage. I've got my brew back. See, just like magic. The first part of the management stage for us is getting them past seedlings. And the way I do this is I grow plenty of them. We've got possums and rats that like to nibble off small tomato plants. And if I can sow a whole heap, I still have a few that get through. Once they get about a foot high, tomato plants are quite toxic, just about to every animal, which is part of this whole management tip, is once you get your tomatoes to that stage, that's fine. If you are in a position where you've got animals that no matter how many tomatoes you sow in bulk, none of them get through because they all get nibbled off. Perhaps you live in an environment where you need to sow them indoors or in a grow room or in a secure place or under a mesh, uh, under a netting so that the tomato plants are protected during that young stage of growth to get them past at least six to 12 inches high. And then you can open them up and you can be pretty safe that they shouldn't be eaten. The second thing I do is try to manage any early onset of disease like blight or any fungal diseases, the brown spots that you can get on tomato plants and leaves. If you get them too young, they'll retard the plant growth or the plant won't grow at all and the plant might die off. That is something that really needs to be managed right from the get-go. You obviously don't want your plants to get to this stage and then start getting diseased and die off because you know there's a month pretty much gone you try to re-sow again after that your season's just about over and your tomatoes might be ripening at the wrong time or you might not quite make it if you're living in a cold climate tomato seedlings should have enough protection in them to grow quite strong for the first month without too much intervention at all. But then they get to this stage and you can start seeing a few spots and what often happens is the low leaves start touching the soil, which is where the fungal diseases usually lie. And when you get those plants in contact with the soil, the leaves then contract the disease and then it can start moving through the plant and up through the other leaves and then consume the whole plant. And that's what you don't want. So to stop this from happening or to help prevent it from happening, I prune and I also spray. Pruning is easy and I'll just show you a quick demo of that. We've got a couple of nice healthy looking tomato plants here, but you can see that these lower leaves are starting to droop down, touching the ground. What I like to do is go around and just prune them off. You can use the scissors and you can just prune them back of the stem like this, or you can use your fingers and just pinch them out when they're young tomato plants can come off quite easily without any damage to the main stem. And just pinch out those little baby leaves and then you've got that clear stem. Now this one here might come off later, but I don't want to defoliate this young 
tomato plant too much earlier on. So if you take too much off, the plant then can't get as much energy to grow, especially when it's young. So you wanna be careful not to over prune when it's young. And the second thing is when the plants do get larger and start producing, the actual leaves protect the ripening tomatoes and then they will naturally start dying off from blight anyway as the plant becomes adult. And then this is natural again, because as the tomatoes then are ready for ripening, the sun actually helps that process. And that's why your tomato plants are susceptible to blight and other fungal diseases, or they just naturally die back towards the end of the tomato's life because it's just a natural process. And the other thing I do to keep down fungal diseases like blight is to use a spray. And I spray about every fortnight, sometimes three weeks, just depends on how the plants are looking. If they're looking really healthy, I don't spray at all because you don't want to over spray your plants with anything, to be honest, because that can detract from the plant's growth as well. But keep a close eye on them because the diseases can take over rather quick. Here in front of me, not sponsored, I wish I was, but I'm not, is a one we've got in Australia. It's called an eco fungicide and they've got a eco oil here as well and you combine the two. All this is is bicarb soda, right? So you can actually make your own DIY bicarb, buy the bicarb, you know, from the supermarket, add some oil, a few drops of dishwashing liquid and it'll stick to the leaves really well. I don't know if I'd recommend that to beginner gardeners because if you get the mix wrong and you can find those recipes online, you can overdo it and dehydrate your tomato plants and they could you could kill the plants. An easier way, and even I do this, is buy the commercial stuff because this is the right bicarb, it's the right ingredients, they've true and tried, and it's much easier. And this is the right oil. If you use the wrong oil, you know, you can damage your plants. This is a horticultural oil. So it's a specific oil used for plants. It dissolves easily in water, that when you do spray it on the plants, it actually does the job it's supposed to. You can get other commercial types of fungicides that are more potent, things like, you know, copper sprays. People don't like using them because they're not totally organic and they can be indiscriminate and in killing other fungi in the soil, like good fungi that help your plants grow. If I'm gonna be really honest with you, I don't think using any type of fungicide, even the more potent ones, are as bad as, say, using pesticides on your plants, like the real potent pesticides, which I wouldn't use. Watering and weeding are another two quick tips that I do to maintain younger plants. You don't want weeds like this gourd that's coming up too late competing with your young tomato plants. That just can limit the growth you don't want it competing for moisture and out competing for sunlight but you want to also make sure that the moisture is right for tomato plants and tomatoes they do like quite a bit of water but they don't like to be waterlogged of course like most plants and the way that i check that the tomatoes are getting enough water is i stick the finger in and if it's fairly damp well then i think it's fine if my finger's dry and there's not much soil sticking to it well then i'll give the plants a good water sometimes i'll water daily or twice a day in really hot weather for very young tomato seedlings or if i've transplanted a tomato from somewhere else like this one here it's see it's bigger than the other ones i transplanted this fella from another part in the garden and i watered it every day sometimes twice a day just until i could see it starting to grow strong once i could see the plant growing and producing new leaves then i knew it didn't need constant watering i could just monitor it as normal and the last thing i want to talk about is training it's no good leaving the training of a tomato plant too late because as it gets too big it either starts to flop over that can cause its own problems or when you then try to shape it you can damage the plant and it's not as easy when you're trying to pick up a large tomato plant and shape it in the right position you just do this in stages sometimes daily sometimes maybe twice a week come out check on the tomato plants make sure they're growing up the structure that you want or they're growing along the stake that you want even determinate tomato plants like the ones that grow only maybe a meter high and they don't keep growing like a vine are still best staked and then you tie the stem to the stake these indeterminate ones i'm going to train them to go up into a two prong so two stems mostly sometimes you might get 
three or four stems depending on how it goes but I'm going to train them for one stem for probably a couple of feet and then let them branch out to probably two stems and then flop over and it's the same for ones that are growing in a stake like type or a cage type you want to prop them up make sure that you've got them in the right position that way you're not trying to bend them when it's too late and bend them under or fold them through a cage and start breaking the stem or anything like that and ruining all that hard work and waiting for those tomato plants to mature so do that while they're young and you can use things like garden ties this is nice and easy these types of ties but if you don't like that you can get hemp or organic types of strings and then you can nice and easily train those plants and tie them into place oh and i almost forgot mulching yes it's an older me the younger me from a week ago will be back to finish this video off but i just had to mention it because mulching is essential around tomato plants in my opinion anyway some like to call it mulching as i found out in my what happens when you use mulch in the garden video that I released the other day. Anyway, here's me in that video explaining mulching around tomato plants. Mulching around the base helps keep our tomatoes tootsies, their roots nice and cosy on those cold winter nights. Mulch helps to encourage and create a better environment for worms, microbes and beneficial fungi like mycorrhizal which in turn helps the plants grow healthier. Mulch helps to prevent soil-borne diseases. What it does, it creates a barrier between the foliage of the plant and also sometimes the fruit, between it and the soil where a lot of those types of diseases harbour. I'm glad I remembered to include mulching because although the pronunciation isn't important, mulching around tomato plants is. Now back to the younger me. And that's how I maintain, train and care for younger tomato plants so that hopefully they can grow and turn into nice, big, productive plants. Fingers crossed. I mean, disasters can always happen in gardening and uh, that's part of the fun for me, you know? That's part of the challenge. That's part of the, the risk taking. Grr, I'm such a risky gardener. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and share it around. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Get into your gardening. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Ah, I'll finish my brew. I might go get another one, I think. Come on, you can do it. Keep growing, oh, and talk to your plants too. That helps a lot. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I don't think I'm crazy.